What's going on everyone? My name's Tenebris Infinite and welcome back to Generation Zero. Today I'm gonna bring you dudes five different shock ammunition traps that you need to try out in Generation Zero. These traps can dish out a ton of damage and kill groups of machines with just a handful of bullets. The thing with traps in Generation Zero is that it's kind of like the ultimate form of experimental gameplay, and it always leads up to some sort of general chaos. But the point of these is to have fun and unique new ways you can approach fighting machines. And if you're on Xbox, these are traps you can look forward to using, hopefully very soon. So let's jump into the very first trap here. So for our first trap, we're making an upgraded car trap. This is pretty simple. The idea is, is it uses the small explosions created by the shock procs that will then cause the car to explode, but at the same time electrify the machines that run into the shock trip wires that will make those procs happen. The way you want to set this trap up is you want to shoot a bullet kind of beneath the car right here, another bullet outwards, and another bullet outwards, and then at the back side you want to shoot a bullet down here and then kind of up and along the top of the car. And that's how you make an upgraded car trap. It's simple, it doesn't cost a lot of ammunition, but it creates a pretty big boom that does a serious amount of damage to machines. I find this works best when you can get a few cars in a row and you can just shoot a few shots in between each car to set up a few of those shock procs. But words to the wise, whenever you're setting up any sort of car trap, be prepared to possibly die in the process. And if you don't want to take the time to set this up to make it look nice, you can just shoot a couple shots on the ground and sometimes that'll work too. Next up, we're going to make a dummy thick trip wire. And so the whole idea of this is just laying down as many connective lines as we can in a single area so that that way we can make pretty much just a really durable trip wire that uh, we can even refill with extra shots. So all you gotta do is find a side and another side and then another side and another side but you have to keep a pretty healthy distance. You can notice that some of these are not creating like full-blown trip wires. So you want to kind of actually space things out pretty far from one another so that the kind of uh, needle point doesn't get tripped up with other needle points. Pretty much in order to get a stronger trip wire you need more vertical height. So this makes things like telephone poles that are close to trees and just general trees that are close together uh, really useful for making kind of crazy trip wires that you can then draw machines into. The carnage you can lay out with these trip wires is glorious, my dudes. And so again, you just want to make sure that you've got horizontal trip wires coming out from your shock rocks, and you want to lay down as many as you can in a kind of generalized, close-knit area, but not so close that they're getting confused. This trap takes maybe a little bit of practice to get used to, but once you get really used to it, you'll be able to lay down crazy trip wires, and I highly advise you take advantage of this while you can. I have a small feeling that shock ammo might get nerfed at some point, and we might not be able to create awesome trip wires like this. Sometimes you have to kind of bait the machines into the trip wire. You could do this just by kind of running around your trip wire in a bit of a circle. Eventually the machines will start just running through the trip wire and shocking themselves and dying all over the place. For the Doggo AI, I'm not going to make a whole full-blown AI manipulation video like I made in the past, but 
For the doggo AI, you want to head pretty far back in order to get the dog to actually chase after you. Uh, so you want to like really make some solid distance between you and that doggo if you want to draw it through a tripwire. This next trap is a simple concept but incredibly efficient and the more simple the concept the easier it is to lay down. The idea of this is just making a loaded tripwire, loaded with anything that you want to load it with. So you can put down landmines if you want or you can use things that create a little bit more damage or potential smoke screens and you can just place these inside of the tripwire. Now you do want to be careful because if you set off the tripwire you could set off the whole trap and nuke yourself out of existence but when you set these up you're able to wombo combo a whole bunch of really solid damage dealing things together with the shock wire. And again those small explosions that you get from the shock rocks will set off canisters, EMPs, or fuel cells. And Personally, I really like using EMPs because it just kind of works with the whole thing. And nice! My electricity disappeared in the middle of this clip. Sick! Small words to the wise, you can wind up setting off your own traps by accidentally bumping into the tripwire, so be careful with that because it, if you have explosives down, you can kill yourself real easy. Now for this next trap, it's a upgraded landmine, and this uses specifically the AG4, the experimental AG4 with the shock ammo, because the idea of this is to have a landmine that will also light the machine on fire. The way this works is you just place down a landmine, you grab yourself an experimental AG4, and you shoot a small triangle around the landmine. When the machine runs into any of these uh, little shock needle guys, it will wind up setting off the landmine by proximity and will wind up exploding them kind of like four times essentially if you can get a really solid explosion out of it. And most of the time that will take down the machine, but if not, then you'll have the fire damage afterwards uh, that will be able to kind of finish them off. That's right, yeah. <laughs> even though that was just the land. So one thing you want to keep in mind when you're placing down mines is that hunters will send off ticks and stuff like that and the ticks will kind of waste your mines. So you want to be a little bit careful and maybe sometimes you want to try to shoot the ticks. I had like a full shock ammo loadout. You always want to keep one gun that doesn't have shock ammo so that that way you aren't messing up your tripwires too much. And for the last trap, I've kind of left the most complicated trap for last here. And it's only complicated because you need to shoot in kind of like a select pattern here in order to get the proper X shape that you're going to be making your trap out of. So you want to shoot your first shot and then come across for your second shot. For your third shot, you're going to come down at an angle. Then for your next shot, you're going to come across again. And this way, uh, <laughs> hey, it actually just turned into a perfect X. Sometimes it'll come across like this, and sometimes it'll come across the top. You can kind of see it faintly here. Uh, it's, <laughs> again, it's probably the toughest trap in the list because there's a lot of random factors to it. Sometimes you need to kind of come back to your first shot and kind of outline the X again to make sure that you get that crisscross shape. But once you have it, it's actually really good because it deals a ton of damage. And of course, they disappeared on me again. Alright, so, then you want to take your explosive or whatever you're placing down as your trap material and you want to place it into the three triangles that you've made. And this winds up becoming like a really solid damage dealing trap because you get all of the trip wires. If you're using the experimental AG4, you get fire damage, and then you get four explosions of whatever your trap material is. 
With the X trap and the improved car trap, I advise you use a silenced weapon in order to set up the trap, that way you won't be alerting machines to your presence too quickly. Machines can still hear suppressed weapons, so you do need to keep that in mind when you're using suppressed weapons, they'll gradually become aware of you, and then if you shoot while they're close to the location, they'll aggro on you right away. Uh, but if you use suppressed weapons, a lot of times you can set up these traps pretty quickly and pretty easily without alerting the machines in the process. So there we go my dudes, five shock traps that you absolutely need to try out here in Generation Zero. They're a ton of fun to use, sometimes kind of goofy, but that's what you get with Generation Zero. It's kind of like the bikes a little bit. but. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps out my channel. And I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.